G'day guys, welcome to another episode of KTM Summer Grill. My name is Simon Chapman, supercars reporter for speedcafe.com. And at the time of filming, we are talking to Molly Taylor, fresh of her Extreme E series win. Molly, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, it's been a, um, a very intense week, but uh, yeah, it all ended up really well and we were able to take the championship out. So it's been a big year um, and a nice way to finish it off. Molly, it's, um, it's crazy to think, I guess, at the start of this year, you know, Extreme E was sort of just a little bit of a concept and it's really taken off uh, in 2021. Fantastic for you to sort of be part of uh, what's been an, an incredible sort of series, you know, joining the Rosberg team, uh, winning in your first season and I guess being part of something that's really special for the world of motorsport at the moment. Yeah, it's, um, it's an incredible concept. And I think, uh, you know, when they sort of were explaining what, what they wanted to do, you know, it just seemed so ambitious. Um, so to be able to, to put it all together the way they have uh, has been yeah, incredibly impressive. And I think the, the caliber of the drivers and the, the team owners and everyone that's signed up to be a part of the series is a real testament to, um, you know, what, what, what they think about the series and its potential for the future. And if you're watching this now and you're wondering, Where's Molly? She's currently in the back seat of a car because she's only just won the championship in the last few hours. So we got her hot off um, the race. So it's, yeah, it's been a whirlwind sort of, I guess, 12 hours since winning the race. Um, how's the vibe in the team? Yeah, everyone's um, over the moon. Everyone's put so much into this. Um, and there's just, yeah, been, been so much work that's gone into to put it all together. So it's just a great result. And, and thank you to the team and everyone who's, who's done so much. You know, there's really, um, yeah, it, a, a massive a massive team effort on on all fronts so it's been nice to to get being able to relax and um, spend a bit of time with everyone with uh, with no pressure of the racing just just to enjoy and celebrate fantastic uh, motorsport is one of those i guess um unique sports in that you know it, there is no i guess um issues with gender so much as far as you know it's you and the car right you know but it's great that that extreme has really taken that opportunity to another level and I guess sort of balance the books a little bit by you know pairing men and women together it it's, must be interesting being in in that sort of environment and I guess you know having more of a female presence than maybe other forms of motorsport that you've perhaps competed in previously uh yeah I think it's, it's been a great concept um I mean it's done a couple of things like firstly for for the females on the grid it's a massive career opportunity to be able to be um, you know, learning from and competing with the best male drivers of every motorsport category in the world, um, which is pretty incredible opportunity for us. And then I think uh, it's also really important on the visibility side, you know, for young girls to be able to see men and women competing in motorsport. And, um, you know, if we can do that and we can influence or encourage more young girls to naturally get more involved in motorsport at a younger age, then I think, you know, we're going to naturally have a better balance and, and you know, have this kind of gender split and more females just competing through through more starting at the grassroots level. For sure. Motorsport, it's sort of, I guess, in the last couple of years or so, has sort of, I guess, um, had more, I guess, maybe talk around some of these topics. You know, we see Lewis Hamilton is really striving for equality, you know, not just gender-based equality, but race-based equality. And, and we're seeing that sort of, you know, expand into some of the other drivers as well. What's it like being on the front line there in a series that is, you know, really sort of pushing the boundaries? Yeah, I think it's really cool to be um, part of a series that's really kind of changing the rule books on, on how motorsport could be set up and um, yeah, to do every element of what we're doing in the locations that we go to. Um, you know, I've just come off the ship where we stay uh, and, you know, all the equipment and cars sail around the world to each event. Um, the sustainability side, like the race formats, everything is just um, all really new and exciting. So it's kind of cool to be uh, yeah, part of something like that and, and keep... Uh, seeing how it develops and improves and, and how we can build on it for the future. I guess at, at face value, someone could look at Extreme E and say, okay, well, you know, you're racing in these environments, but it's it's racing, right? Like you've, you're still transporting a lot of the equipment around on, on big freighters and things like that. But what is this series doing is, in terms of sustainability and trying to balance the books on, on that front? Yeah, I mean, so as I say, every all the equipment is uh, goes around on, on a ship. They have scientists that are on the ship and they're also... Uh, taking part in um, research projects and, and gathering data, you know, during um, during the journey of, of all the areas that we go. Um, obviously, it's electric uh, vehicles. They're powered by um, on-site generated hydrogen power. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, really cool um, technology that's going into that. And then on the, um, 
on the specific events that we go to, we have um, with our team, with RxR, a driven by purpose campaign, and also Extreme to a larger extent has a uh, legacy program as well. So that's involved in, in working with those local areas to uh, have you know whatever specific projects can help in their local communities and from the sustainability side, and then more broadly, but yeah, um, I'm not sure exactly what uh, TV events that are viewed are all sporting events so I think if it's taking all this um, and putting it using the sporting format to reach a larger audience and be able to not only create exciting racing but to then share this message and education um, and engage a whole lot of people um, you know from, from around the world that all the fan bases of all the teams so I think from from that side it can really have a, a really big meaningful impact. I guess the proof is in the pudding right it's good to have guys like we see Nico Rosberg who you're associated with Lewis Hamilton he's got a team Jensen Button's got a team in Extreme E. So do you feel like that profile is really going to help Extreme E grow into 2022? Yeah, for sure. To have the, the caliber of names. Um, yeah, as you just say, with Nico and, and Lewis and, and Jensen, and then, you know, we've also got Carlos Sainz, Sebastian Loeb, um, Johan Christofferson. So, uh, yeah, the, having those kind of names um, and their audiences, you know, people really respect what they do from the sporting side. Um, and <laughs> someone having fun driving bus. Um, yeah, and, and, and want to, um, you know, it just brings a whole new new audience um, on electric motorsport and also the sustainability side. So I think that's really the, the key thing is about spreading that message as far and wide as we can using sport to do that. Definitely. I've got to ask while I've got you here, Molly, obviously um, the World Rally Championship is something that you've obviously kept a, a close eye on and have competed in recently. What, what are sort of your chances for 2022 and making return there? Oh, I would love to. Um, it, it's um, yeah, it's still still a dream for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, no, no firm firm plans for 2022 yet. Just um, you know, aside from now going into Dakar and focusing on that, and then trying to uh, yeah, see where everything ends up and, and what's possible. Fantastic. Well, it's a pleasure to have you, Molly, and congratulations again on your Extreme E title. It's um, great, I guess, to have that accolade as the first ever champion of that series. Thanks very much. Brilliant. And that concludes this episode of KTM Summer Grill. Stay tuned to speedcafe.com for more. As part of this year's KTM Summer Grill, each week KTM is giving away the perfect summer beach pack, which includes an umbrella, cap, gym bag, and key holder. To enter the draw, head to speedcafe.com or hit the link in the description below.